What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm sharing with you the first of a few reviews I have coming up. And this first one is on the Realistic Practice Hand from Nail Art Supplies UK. So I got this for Christmas. This is the actual Christmas bundle that they did. So you have lots of little accessories and things like that in with the price. So I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on it. And I'm also going to be showing you guys a full detailed nail art design using this hand, giving you my thoughts, sharing with you my experience experience and all of that good stuff so if you guys would be interested in a review and demo of this realistic practice hand then just keep on watching so guys diving right in with today's video and i'm first going to share with you the contents of the package and remember if you are interested in checking out me actually unboxing the hand then check out my last video which was my haul because i show you at the end what the package was like and everything but in the actual little package you do get your silicone hand i got kitty she is light skinned with medium to warm undertones and then you also get an instruction manual with everything you do and don't when preparing your hand and looking after her you also get a really beautiful cable knit sleeve which is basically like a little photograph prop and it honestly does it make the pictures look so much better with the hand you then get a a clamp this is a clamp that obviously holds the hand in place and has a little attachment that it could be attached to your desk so everything is nice and secure and then you get a set of water decals i got these really cute tartan ones which would have came in so handy when i did my last tartan nails and then you also get some glue dots these are um, another option for attaching the tips to the hand and then you get a little pot of vaseline the primer that is only for this hand and then 20 nail tips so I haven't touched this hand, this is me opening it for the very first time. So as you can see, it came in a little bag there just to keep it all nice and secure. And the one thing that I did notice when I opened up the bag was that it had a really strong smell. But um, I'm pretty sure that's just whatever chemicals they used in keeping the hand preserved. And then you get... As I got closer to the hand, you were able to see that there is a lot of imperfections in the back of the hand, which made me a little bit worried um, because I wasn't sure um, that I was actually buying seconds, if that makes any sense. I thought specifically in the Christmas bundle you were getting a new um, hand, but it really does look like this is a seconds hand because of the squint finger and also the little imperfections that is in the back. And then it is also quite flaky as well, but that is obviously the Vaseline again helps preserve the hand and keep it in good nick while um it's in postage so the christmas bundle retailed for 60 pound and then when you take into account the shipping and things like that it worked out to 68 pounds so i just wanted to share with you a little difference in the this realistic practice hand to some others on the market so this one doesn't have the cuticle slits it's um basically just um a full nail if that makes any sense like a full nail bed so you basically just set the nail tips on top of the nail and you don't have to push them in which i think has some pros and some cons which i will share with you um later on in the video so as you can see they do sit quite flush to the the cuticle area so all that was nice and well so due to the sorry according to the instruction manuals you have to before you go ahead and use your hand or anything like that you have to wash and sanitize it so i just have a bowl of warm water here with some soap in it and i'm just going to go ahead and give the hand a good scrub removing any of that flakes and i will say that the hand 90 percent of the flakes were removed once i washed the hand and then the smell had also dissipated as well so i was really pleased with that so then my next step was to go ahead and leave it for about 5 or 10 minutes on that kitchen roll just to dry off the hand. I didn't want to scrub it in case I got any hairs on it. Um, then I just wanted to show you guys an up close look at everything once it was washed. So as you can see it's most definitely a seconds hand. There are a lot of imperfections on the back of the hand and when you look up on the Nail Art UK's website you can see that they do offer seconds and mention that there is um, imperfections on the back of the hand but the front of the hand is okay i was unfortunate in that my hand had a squint finger and the imperfections in the back but i was able to attach the nail tips to the hand and they in a sort of squint way so they looked like they were totally straight on the hand so that i wasn't too fussed with but what i was bothered with was the fact that i 
didn't know that I was buying a second hand. I thought that this was a new hand in a bundle that they did for Christmas. So when I contacted the lady, um, she did state to me that they don't usually accept um, returns on their hands and that... Um, if I was to return the product, it would have to be in 100% order. And I will share with you um, why that was impossible for me at that time. So I just went ahead and attached my hand to the clamp. And as you can see, it holds it nicely. So you're able to get it in focus on your camera. And it's just like holding on to a client's hand. So other than the imperfections and the squint finger, everything with this hand at this point was completely fine. So I continued on with showing you guys my review. So I went ahead and applied the primer to the nails. And again, you want to remember that this primer is not fit for human skin, so only apply it to your silicone hand. So I did go ahead and apply that to all of the no those nails and allowed that to dry. And then I went in with my Sally's nail glue and some of those nail tips that you get with the hand. I applied a tiny amount of that nail glue to the hand in a downward motion and then I just really firmly pressed those hands until they were stuck in place and I did that with the rest of those nails. So as you can see guys the nails do sit nice and flush with the cuticle area and when I applied the tips to the nails I had no issues whatsoever everything applied fine and it looked okay. So this is how the hand looks once I have gone ahead and applied all of the nail tips and this is where things started to go a little bit tits up. So I went ahead and filed the nails like I would with my flexi finger or anything like that. I went ahead and filed them so I could go ahead and attach the tips and then I started to notice at the top of the cuticle areas that they were sort of lifting the nail tips off and at first I thought it was just because I didn't add the nail glue all the way up that um, it was maybe just lifting a tiny bit. So I just continued on with showing you guys my design. So I went ahead, applied my tips, and then I made sure I pinched them in so everything was nice and flush. And finally guys, here's the hand once I have gone ahead and applied all of the tips to the nails and then I also went ahead and filed those tips in line with the natural nails. So as you can see, everything still looked semi-okay at this point, so I continued on and I applied my nail primer and also went in with the Ink London's base elevation as my base layer before I apply the rest of the gels. So I just want to say, in terms of feeling and appearance of the hand, everything appeared fine. But I did notice when I started to use some nail cleanser or things like that on the hand, that um, when I was cleaning the nails, that it was taking off some of the paint. So you do have to be careful with that as well. So now I'm going in to start building up my nail bed area. I'm doing that on the middle finger and also the ring finger. I'm going in with Donato's Silky Rose, which is an absolutely beautiful light covered pink. It is so gorgeous and I got it in my recent haul so with my number six Klinsky brush I'm just going in working on that smile line area and then tidying that up I did two layers before I moved on to the rest of the nails and then for the pinky and the pointer I am going to be using the same gel the same brush and I'm just doing it in smaller beads and working that gel down the whole nail until I have an even nail and as you can see this gel was an absolute dream to work with but I'm going to save that for another video I really want to show you how awesome this new line of gel that I've just found it is honestly amazing guys so yeah I do that on a full cover nail on the both the pinky and the pointer and then I pop that into my LED light for a full cure And here's the nails once I have gone ahead and applied the gel to all of the nails and I'm now going in and I'm going to start filing and this is where everything started to go a little bit wrong. So I first went in and as you can see I'm really holding on to the top of the nail. I was instructed to hold on and always support it so that's exactly what I was doing. I filed the smile lines into shape and also the other two nails and then as you can see the cuticle area on that pointer finger started to rip. 
and again I also thought that it may be the tip so I wasn't too full first at this point it wasn't until a little later on that I realized the finger had actually ripped at the cuticle area from halfway down to right up so I was kind of wondering what the hell is actually going on so I think in terms of a nail art practice hand this is a really cute hand she's did a fabulous job in making it for appearance purposes and things like that but I think like me if you are a beginner then it's most definitely not a hand for you and I'll tell you why if you are a beginner you're most definitely looking to buy a practice hand for things like practicing filing and practicing building structure and all that good stuff soaking off product and things like that and i think this hand is not fit for filing it really is not a hand that has got much strength to it and much robustness to it when it comes to filing that nail area because on all of the fingers a little bit more filing than i was actually noticing the whole lot of the hand was starting to rip and the the nails that i had put on were actually starting to lift from the top so moving on with the design i am just going in with my glitter application as you can see i'm going in with two glitter planet uk glitters storm and halo first going in with that pointer finger i applied go venezuela by semi lac in two coats and then on top of that i'm going in with glitter planet uk's storm and then over that i put some of glitter planet uk's halo And if you remember, Halo is one of the glitters that I got recently in my Christmas haul. If you haven't seen that, check that out in the description box below. But it's just a hollowed out white glitter and is absolutely stunning. So I'm going to be applying this over the top of that blue glitter onto that still wet um, eye gel in clear. And then I pop that into my LED light to fully cure that nail. And then as you can see I'm also going in with some of the really tiny white dots that are in that glitter mix as well and I'm just adding them sparingly to the nail to add an extra little bit of a pop of white. And then for the ring finger, I first went in with a layer of eye gel and clear again. And then over the top of that, I put some of this silver foil. I just added it with my gel brush so it had a double layer of gel and didn't go anywhere later on. And then once again onto that wet gel, I'm again going in with some of those little discs from that halo glitter and then I'm also adding the tiny little white pips that are in there as well and I do the same with the tiny hexes that are in the storm mix as well, just so both nails match. And then I go in to encapsulate both of those nails with Ink London's Eye Gel in Clear and my number 6 Kalinske brush. And then once I'm happy with that, I pop those in to the LED light for a full cure. And then because I completely forgot like a fool, I also went ahead and added some tiny little foil pieces to the pinky nail going in a slanted sort of way from the top of the cuticle down the side of the nail. And I just want you guys to pay close attention to what I'm actually doing when it comes to this hand as well. As you can see, I'm always supporting the hand. I always have the finger in my hand in a firm way. I'm not pulling on it or I'm not tugging on it or anything like that. I just want to make that completely clear to you guys. It looks like I may be, but this camera is completely sped up. But I'm holding on to that finger and I'm really treating it like it is an actual human being because I'm practicing, so I wanted to have a hand that I could really practice on so when I went to do other people's nails I was a little bit more experienced so for this pointer nail and the nail art for that, I'm first going in with this Crystal's Nails Lace Gel. I'm adding a little bit of this to the nail and then using my Madame Glam Poly Gel Brush, I'm first going in and using the brush end just to make sure everything is in the same sort of position. And then I flatten that out with the spatula end. And then again, I switch over to that brush end, dipping it into some isopropyl alcohol just so I could manoeuvre that gel. And then I add a sort of scallop design at the bottom. 
And then as you can see, while I'm doing this nail, look at the top of the cuticle area and you can really see where it was starting to rip. So this was the worst finger of all. It was the one that was squint, so I'm not sure if that's maybe messed with the structure of the whole nail bed. But this was the nail that was completely slanted to one side and it's also the nail that had ripped the most as I went along. But um, I wasn't... Uh, not not paying attention but as you can see i'm not going rough at all i'm merely doing what any normal person who is practicing hands um nails would be doing so i scalloped that nail and then i went in with my dotting tool just to add a little bit of a design not pulling the nail not tugging it just merely adding a little bit of nail art and then using a dotting tool, I went in and added a tiny little flower and sort of a little lace design as well. So I first started by doing a dot in the middle and then adding tiny little lines at each side. And then I changed my mind with the dots coming up from the top and just basically added a slit like, like a little line as well. And then I filled that in with some more dots just to fill up the rest of that lace design. And then I fully cure that nail for 60 seconds just to make sure I have completely cured that part of the nail design. And then I went ahead and added some little bits of nail art to the bottom of this nail. So I first started by using the Indigo Nails Sugar Effect Gel and a fine detail brush. And then I added some squiggly lines all down this nail. And then I filled them in with some tiny little dots for a really cute lace nail. And then when I was happy with that, I cured that nail again for 60 seconds. So guys, as you know, you know the drill. My last and final steps in all of my nail routines was to go ahead and file and buff the nails and that's when everything just went a complete and utter nightmare. So as you guys know, all throughout this video I've been mentioning the fact that the cuticle was ripping. This was at the point that I did notice that it was 100% ripping. I was, when I, while I was doing the nails, I must admit I was just enjoying doing the nail design. So as, as I previously mentioned, I did think that it was the tip just coming up where there was no glue so it was when I was doing this that I completely realized that the whole top of the cuticle area had ripped and I'm going to go ahead and insert some pictures so you could see exactly what I mean because like I say I wasn't noticing too much as the nail art was going along so I'm going to start blinging up this nail and adding the top coat to my nail art but I, while I'm doing that I'm going to start sharing with you my thoughts on this hand so again as I mentioned this hand is £60 so it is amongst the cheapest that you could find in terms of the silicone realistic practice hands there are a lot on the market at the moment they are very popular as you guys know so there are lots of different alternatives but here in the uk there aren't many we have the flexi hand which are available from nail necessities and things like that but we only really have this one so when i saw this i was absolutely over the moon i thought hell yes i want to get my hands on one so it was on my wish list for christmas and my mum bought me it so i was totally over the moon and i went into this 100 percent over the moon with the product so when i pulled the product out of the packet and i saw all of the imperfections in the hand i really myself it was totally 100 percent my own fault i should never have went ahead with my nail design but to be completely honest i was okay with the imperfections because they were mostly stuck to just the back of the hand so at that point it wasn't bothering me and then the squint finger like I mentioned previously when I popped the nail tips on it didn't look too bad so again I completely looked past that as well but then as I started to notice how bad the imperfections was and then when I noticed that I had to end up putting the nail tip on squint I was starting to get a little bit pissed off let's just be realistic and I contacted the seller of the realistic practice hands on nail art supplies UK and she informed me that though she didn't usually return the products but she would if I had the hand in a hundred percent um the way it was when I got it meaning that the cuticle areas were exactly the same but as you guys know I didn't realize that the cuticle was actually ripping away until after my nail design so I was kind of like how the hell is anyone supposed to send back something that is clearly defunct let's be realistic if you say that they're not supposed to use it when you i showed you pictures of me using the hand um so yeah the rips were completely noticed at last minute but i no longer was able to return the hand because the cuticles had to be exactly the way they were when i received the hand 
so the reason for me filming this video, it all started out with me wanting to share with you how awesome this hand was and how excited I was. And I'm sorry that it turned into a little bit of a moan, but I just wanted to share with you exactly what happened, what I had to deal with and what happened with the hand. And that was simply so you guys could either go ahead and buy the hand because it is an awesome hand. If you're looking for a hand to just paint your nail polish designs on, then it's perfect. It's very realistic and feels nice in the hand. But if you're looking for something a little bit more robust that you could actually practice with then I would say save your money and go for either the flexi hand or one of the other hands on the market so guys here is my nail design once everything is done and I'm so sorry that this review turned into a negative one because I was honestly so excited to share with you this nail design I it was one of my favorites that I've done in a while and I really do hope you enjoyed that part of the video and I promise in later on videos we will stick away from the negativity but I really do hope you guys enjoyed my honest review of the silicon realistic practice hand from nail supplies UK and if you did please give me a thumbs up I would totally appreciate it and if you're new to my channel hello my name is Kylie I am a complete nail polish addict and on this channel you will find everything from nail art to swatches reviews and the occasional haul so if that's something that piques your interest go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click that notifications bell and as always thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one bye